You're listening to the Observing Eye. Pirate Radio for the Mind. Coming at you fresh from the computer hell cabin. Hello, you beautiful lot. In the words of Rebecca Black, it's Friday. It's the 15th of March, 2024. And you're listening to episode 56 of The Observing Eye, coming at you live from the computer hell cabin. As always, every week we get philosophical, psychological, and a little bit introspective. And as always, I'm David. And this week, we are going to be tackling a topic that is a bit of a game changer, if we can get it right. And that's mastering self-control. So take a moment to contemplate, to reflect upon the last time that you were on a brink of a decision that tested your willpower. Maybe it was resisting that extra slice of cake. Or maybe staying focused on a project at work. Despite the numerous distractions, people standing over your desk and just generally being a pain in the backside, there's even hitting the snooze button one too many times in the morning so that your alarm goes off and then you wake up at 10 and you realize you've missed that meeting you were supposed to have at 9 a.m. and everyone's disappointed. We've all been there. The battle between what we want in the moment and what we know is best for us in the long run. Self-control, or the ability to regulate our impulses, desires and emotions, is at the core of so many of our daily challenges and successes. It's what helps us stick to healthy habits, focus on our goals, and navigate the complexities of our emotions and relationships. But why is mastering self-control so challenging, yet so crucial? And more importantly, how can we get better at it? Today, we're going to unravel the science and strategies behind self-control. We'll explore why it plays such a pivotal role in our happiness and achievement. The common pitfalls we face in practicing self-control and we'll offer you some practical and actionable ways that you can strengthen it within yourself. Whether you're looking to improve your productivity, enhance your health, or just kind of want to move towards achieving some aspirations, mastering self-control can open the floodgate to a deluge of ways for us to grow as a person and to find fulfillment in our lives. So in this, ladies and gentlemen, the final episode of our Beyond Resolution series, brace yourselves as we get into the world of self-control. So before we dive into the complexities and strategies surrounding it, let's establish a clear understanding of what it is that we are actually talking about. Self-control, also known as self-regulation, is the ability to manage our impulses, emotions and behaviours in order to achieve long-term goals. It's what allows us to pause and think before acting, guiding our decisions in a way that aligns with our overarching values and objectives. At its core, self-control involves a battle of sorts between two competing aspects of the self. On one side, we have our immediate desires and temptations, those urges that promised instant gratification, but often at the expense of our long-term goals. On the other, there's the part of us that looks towards the future, prioritizing lasting fulfillment over fleeting pleasure. The conflict isn't just philosophical. It has its roots deep in our biology. Research in neuroscience points to different areas of the brain involved in this tug of war. The prefrontal cortex, responsible for decision making and impulse control, often finds itself at odds with the more primitive parts of our brain, like the amygdala, which drives emotional reactions and immediate desires. Understanding self-control in this way helps us see why mastering it can be so challenging. It's not merely a matter of willpower or moral strength. It's a complex interplay of cognitive processes, emotional responses, and sometimes deep-seated habits that we've cultivated over years or even decades. 
As we continue this exploration, let's keep the definition of self-control in mind. It's not just about resisting temptation. It's not just about exercising willpower. It's aligning our actions with our deepest values and long-term aspirations. It's about choosing who we want to be in every moment and every decision. So let's, uh, let's take a dive into the benefits of self-control. So firstly, from a neuroscience standpoint, exercising self-control actually strengthens certain areas of the brain, notably the prefrontal cortex. This region is responsible for decision-making, emotional regulation, and impulse control. Regularly engaging in tasks that require self-discipline can enhance neural connectivity here, making it easier over time to choose long-term satisfaction over immediate gratification. This neural strengthening offers tangible benefits across various aspects of life. For one, it improves our focus and productivity. With enhanced self-control, we're better equipped to resist distractions and stay committed to our tasks, whether it's finishing up that spreadsheet, you know, building something for a hobby, or just staying organized in the sort of business as usual of day-to-day -day life. From a health perspective, the impact is equally significant. Numerous studies have linked strong self-control to healthier eating habits, regular exercise, and reduced substance abuse, which kind of feels like common sense, really. So if our ability to resist, you know, as we said, that extra bit of cake or that chocolate muffin, or we can actually get up when the alarm goes off and not snooze it 40 times and then go for a jog because that's what we decided we're going to do, these aspects of self-control contribute to much better physical health and well-being. So, you know, we can, we can stick to our plans, we can put things in motion and be consistent. On a slightly more esoteric level, self-control is the gateway to deeper self-understanding and spiritual growth. Many philosophical and spiritual traditions emphasize the mastery of one's own desires and impulses as a path to enlightenment or a higher state of being. Through self-control, we learn to detach from our immediate wants and focus on our deeper, more enduring values and connections. This mastery can lead to a profound sense of inner peace and contentment. When we're not constantly swayed by our impulses, we can find a more stable, centered place within ourselves. It's from this place of equilibrium that we can approach life with a clearer vision and a heart open to deeper experiences of joy and connection. Moreover, in relationships, self-control fosters patience, understanding, and empathy. It allows us to respond rather than react, to listen deeply rather than jumping to conclusions. This not only enriches our personal relationships, but enhances our social interactions, making us more compassionate and connected individuals. So as we can see, the benefits of mastering self-control extend far beyond mere productivity or health. They touch on the very essence of our happiness, our relationships, and our quest for meaning. By cultivating self-control, we're not just improving our ability to resist temptations, we're enhancing our capacity to live fully, deeply, and with meaning. So while the journey towards mastering self-control is laden with benefits, it's not without its challenges. The path is often winding, marked by obstacles that stem from our very human nature and the complex emotions that accompany it. At the heart of many self-control challenges lies the fundamental human desire for instant gratification. Our brains are wired to seek immediate rewards, a trait that has served us well in evolutionary terms but can lead us astray in the modern world. This craving for instant satisfaction often battles with our long-term goals, creating a tug of war between the present and the future. This conflict is not just a matter of willpower, it's deeply emotional. Behind the urge to indulge in a momentary pleasure or to procrastinate on a task, there often lies a tapestry of feelings, fear, anxiety, discomfort, self-doubt. These emotions can cloud our judgment, making the path of least resistance, the path of instant gratification, seem the most appealing. Fear, in particular, always plays a significant role. Fear of failure can paralyze us, making us choose inaction over the risk of not meeting our expectations or those of others. Conversely, fear of success can be just as debilitating, where the prospect of change that success brings feels overwhelming. These fears can lead to self-sabotage, undermining our self-control and our progress towards our goals. Another emotional challenge to self-control is stress. When we're stressed, 
our capacity for self-control diminishes. We're more likely to seek comfort in unhealthy habits or quick fixes, which, though soothing in the moment, can derail our long-term aspirations. The stress response narrows our focus to immediate relief, sidelining our higher objectives. Then there's the emotional toll of perfectionism. For those who strive for perfection, the possibility of any outcome less than flawless can be a source of significant anxiety. This pressure can lead to procrastination or avoidance. If the result won't be perfect, why bother at all? This mindset not only challenges our self-control, but can rob us of the joy found in learning and growth. The complexities of our emotions and desires can make self-control a formidable challenge. Yet it's important to remember that these feelings are part of the human experience. They don't signify failure, but rather opportunities for deeper self-understanding and growth. Recognizing and addressing the emotions behind our self-control challenges is the first step towards overcoming them. It's through this understanding that we can begin to develop strategies that cater not just to our behaviors, but to our emotional well-being. And of course, it wouldn't be the observing eye if we didn't look to philosophy for some insights and perspective. Let's get into some old wisdom and see what philosophy has to say on self-control. Kel surprise, I'm starting with Stoicism. So Stenica, Stenica, Seneca, who the hell's Stenica? Seneca, a Stoic philosopher, statesman, and playwright of ancient Rome, had much to say on the idea of self-control, which he considered central to the Stoic philosophy of living a virtuous and rational life. While Seneca wrote extensively on many aspects of Stoic ethics, several of his thoughts directly touch upon the theme of self-control. Seneca often emphasized the importance of moderation in all aspects of life. He believed that self-control was necessary to maintain balance and avoid the extremes of emotion and desire that could lead to unhappiness and turmoil. In his letters, Seneca frequently advises on the moderation of passions and desires as a path to tranquility. Like other Stoics, he placed a high value on reason as the guiding principle of life. He believed that true self-control was achieved not through sheer willpower, but through understanding and reason. By using reason to comprehend the transient nature of external goods and the futility of excessive desire, one could cultivate a life of virtue and contentment. In ancient Indian philosophy, the Bhagavad Gita, a 700-verse Hindu scripture that is part of the Indian epic Mahabharata, addresses the concept of self-control in a profound and multifaceted manner. It prevents self-control not just as discipline over one's physical actions, but as a deeper spiritual practice, integral to achieving wisdom, understanding one's true self, and ultimately reaching a state of peace and liberation. It emphasizes the importance of controlling the mind and senses to attain spiritual wisdom and peace. Lord Krishna advises Arunya that just as a tortoise withdraws its limbs, one should withdraw the senses from worldly objects to stabilize the mind. This analogy highlights the necessity of self-control in detaching from transient pleasures and focusing on inner growth. Krishna also said that one who has control over the mind is tranquil in heat and cold, in pleasure and pain, and in honor and dishonor, and is ever steadfast with the Supreme Self. In this he speaks of the importance of equanimity and the control of our mental and emotional responses. Zipping forwards in time a little bit, we get onto my favorite Friedrich Nietzsche, a very influential German philosopher who had a very complex view on self-control, which intertwines with his broader philosophical themes like the will to power, the master-slave morality, and the revaluation of values. While Nietzsche doesn't address self-control in the same sort of direct manner as the Stoic philosophers, his work provides a very rich and nuanced perspective on self-mastery and discipline. Nietzsche often discussed the concept of self-mastery as part of his broader critique of traditional morality. In his view, the highest individuals, who he sometimes referred to as higher men, or the ubermensch, or overman, or overmind, are those who overcome themselves. This process involves self-control, but is framed as a creative and dynamic struggle to transcend conventional values and create one's own path. Central to Nietzsche's philosophy is the concept of the will to power, which he describes as an intrinsic drive towards growth, dominance, and expansion. Self-control in this context can be seen as the ability to harness and direct this will. 
not in the sense of suppressing desires, but in the pursuit of one's own development and self-overcoming. So these philosophical viewpoints, spanning cultures and epochs, share a very common recognition of self-control as a fundamental component of a meaningful, ethical and fulfilled life. They remind us that mastering self-control is not just about personal gain, but about living in accordance with much deeper principles and values. Now, if you've been here before, you all know how I like to try and give you some strategies and ideas that you can take away and try at home. So how can we enhance our self-control in daily life? What strategies can we use? Here is a little lowdown of some ideas that you can try yourself. So firstly, set clear goals and intentions. The first step in enhancing self-control is to define what it means for you. Identify specific areas where you wish to improve, be it managing time, reducing procrastination, controlling emotional responses. Setting clear achievable goals provides us a roadmap and a sense of purpose. Next, understand your triggers. Self-control is often challenged by specific triggers in our environment or in our emotions. By identifying these triggers, we can develop strategies to avoid them or to respond differently. This might mean changing your routine, removing temptations from your environment, or practicing mindfulness to become more aware of your emotional responses. Then we have developing healthy routines. Consistency is king when it comes to mastering self-control. Establishing healthy routines and habits helps to automate positive behaviours, reducing the mental effort required to make beneficial choices. Start small with one or two routines and gradually build upon them as they become ingrained in your daily life. Then of course there is mindfulness and meditation. Mindfulness practices, including meditation, can profoundly impact your ability to exercise self-control. By bringing your attention to the present moment and observing your thoughts and feelings without judgment, you can gain insights into your desires and impulses, making it easier to manage them more consciously. One of my favourites, reframe your perspective. How you think about self-control can influence your ability to exercise it. Instead of viewing it as a struggle or deprivation, try to see it as an opportunity for growth and self-improvement. Reframing your perspective can turn the journey of enhancing self-control into a positive and empowering experience. Enhancing self-control is a gradual process, one that requires patience, persistence, and self-compassion. Now, of course, mastering self-control, it's a challenging endeavor. It's going to test the limits of our willpower, our patience, and our perseverance. But it can also be one of the most rewarding journeys that we can embark on. The benefits of self-control extend far beyond the immediate gratification of our desires. They touch at the very core of our well-being, our relationships, and our contributions to the world at large. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all I have to say on the subject of mastering self-control. I want to thank you, as always, for joining me today. Your attention and your awareness are greatly appreciated. I hope that you found some inspiration, some insight, and some practical advice that's going to help you on your path towards mastering self-control. Just keep in mind that we are all works in progress and that self-control is a continuous, continuous process. Be kind to yourself along the way and reach out for support when you need it. If today's episode has sparked something in you, if you've had an aha moment, or if you simply want to share your experiences and strategies in mastering self-control that you've discovered, I would love to hear from you. You can share your stories via Substack at theobservingeye.com or on social media. You can find us on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at theobservingeye and on TikTok and Instagram with the handle at the observing eye as well. As we part ways, I want to encourage you to embrace the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead with open arms. 
Keep in your mind that mastering self-control is not about restraining yourselves. It is about unlocking your true potential and stepping into the best version of who you are. Take care, everybody. Much love, and I'll catch you soon. You've been listening to The Observing Eye. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope it's been useful. And if you're interested in any more of my writing or work around psychology, philosophy, and general day-to-day living, please go and take a look at my substack, which is theobservingeye.com. And that's I as in the letter, not I as in the gelatinous organ through which you see. Take care, everybody. Much love, and I'll catch you soon.